This weekend, I've been out shooting landscapes and unfortunately it didn't go too well. This shoe is always destined to be a balls up. I mean, even a monument got its balls out and something else up. Curse you bastard. Okay, there we are. Anyway, first of all, forgot my video mic pro from Rode, so the sound's gonna be crap. Enjoy my lovely viewers, the stereo sound of wind. When you do landscape photography, sometimes it can be a bit hit and miss with picking locations. Sometimes you get deep fried gold in a landscape, and sometimes it's utter deep fried diarrhea. This seems like it had potential. I mean, it's a tower. It's basically a really old building on top of a hill. Great views, construction paraphernalia on the left. You know the score, you've picked a point of interest, you go out, you have high expectations for your shoot, but when you arrive, you feel a little bit disappointed. I tried to make it work all two of the angles that I decided to shoot at, but both of them didn't turn out quite so well. Well, I didn't really like the photos. And then it got me thinking about a couple of things. Number one, location is everything with landscape shooting. And number two, why not make a video about how to get some lovely landscape shots? Boom, here. Point number one has just been covered actually, so let's skip to number two. Uh, no, point one please. Oh, all right then. Well, anyway, location, location, location is everything when it comes to landscape shooting because that is your subject. Research it, Google it, explore, go out and find new places to shoot. There are times it will be a cock up, but do look for locations with that. As Will Hears might say, boom, boom, pow, focal point. You might need to walk a lot until your feet stink or cycle. Well, all right, basically you need to transport your ass from point A to point B, but the reward is getting that view, the subject, the visuals. But that is part and parcel of landscape shooting, going out to new places, exploring and finding out that it might be a little bit cramped because I want you to just be shooting the same shit over and over again. But having said that, it is good to do the shots that have been done many times over because there are loads of ways that you can do the same subject, well, at least more than one anyway. Go back to locations you've been to before. You'll find new angles or see it in a different light, literally. Seasonal differences and weather conditions make it worth trying tried and trusted scapes. And point number two is plan well. Don't just rock up to a location minutes before the sun sets. Allow enough time to set up your tripod, your camera, and find out which angle works best for you. I mean, there will be unforeseen circumstances, which means you take longer to get to location than planned, like running over the neighbor's cat accidentally. But what I'm saying is allow enough time for you to run over the neighbor's cat before going out to shoot. Park closes at 4 p.m. though, so I have to get this shoot done basically within an hour. <laughs> yes, I've been behind schedule before and I didn't run over cat. I can't see a gate that way. It just feels a bit weird to be going down, but it does, but yeah, should we just keep going for it? Yeah. We have about 25 minutes. Okay, more than once. Oh right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes I'm late too, but the point is do as I say, not as I do. Bet that made me sound like your dad, didn't it? Oh, clean your bedroom as well while you're at it. And part of the timing and planning is knowing what you're after in terms of the light. Golden hour, blue hour, twilight. Now people always talk about golden hour, but you can get some seriously sexy shots in the blue hour, appropriate name, and also twilight. Nothing to do with a movie about werewolves having a threesome. It's probably not the plot. I'm DB, I don't know. Golden hour. You've probably heard about it. The sun is hovering above the horizon. The light from the shiny, burning, spherical object in the sky traveling through more atmosphere results in nice, soft, golden, fake tan-like reddish light. Blue hour is when the sun dips to minus four to minus eight degrees below the horizon. All that indirect light takes on a blue shade. Hence the name, duh. And also know your weather. I mean, I can go and Google now and type weather and that is a cloud, that is a big yellow circle, and that's electricity. Probably. 
You don't have to be a meteorologist, just know enough to pretend you know it all, just like I am in this voiceover. Right time of the year and the day after it had rain was the season I went up here for the spark shoot, for some misty landscapes. Next point, and I'm going to try resisting stating the bleeding obvious, like plan well, well actually that was the last point, no, I'm going to try resisting saying stuff like pack your gear well, but I will talk about gear, and there are just a few things which I think you must bring with you for landscape shooting gear wise, and the first one is filters. Now these are everything when it comes to landscape shooting, these are standard variable ND filters, this one's from Syrup. And this is a super dark ND filter. And you can just rotate it to go from five stops of darkness to 10 stops of darkness. Any time today would be nice. And this is not JH5 as well. Ooh, it's super dark. Focus, you twat. It's not just dark, it's super dark. It's not in focus, but you can see it, right? Other filter is just a variable ND filter, also from Syrup. I like Syrup, maple syrup, honey, I, I believe honey is a type of syrup. Ketchup, ketchup, it's not really a syrup. Barbecue sauce, barbecue sauce is good. That's the variable ND filter. So the question is why do you want to stop down your exposure, i.e. make it darker when you've got all of this glorious golden light? Well, things just look better with a slow shutter speed. Fast shutter speed, great for sharpness test shots, but looks too normal, too much like your granny took the photo with her phone. Long exposures have some funky colours and any movement in the sky or sea is blurred. It captures the movement of the cloud and smooths it all out, making it nice and beautiful and creamy and ethereal and stuff. Ooh, big word. And point number four is the bleeding obvious to some people, but get a good solid tripod, not the shitty one that you get free from your camera shop when you buy a new camera. You don't want your tripod wobbling about when you're taking a 30 second exposure because you'll just have to take another one, another 30 second exposure that will probably be wobbly again and at that point you might as well just stay at home and do nothing with your life. Or you could do something, i.e. put your money on something solid with three legs. Not a racehorse, you'll probably lose all your money, unless the other horses only have two. Make sure it doesn't wobble when pressing down on it, has a hook for pointing at, and adding extra stability with baggage. Point number five is lens choice. Have a wide angle lens. You can shoot it in a standard 50mm or 35mm, but it's very useful to have a wide angle to create those dramatic leading lines. And that is point number six. Nice. Think of a leading line, doesn't have to be straight, could be curved, as a visual path to the crowning glory of the image. What a load of bollocks. It just works to have those lines to die. It's like a finger directing to you what you should be looking at. In this one, the line leads your eye towards this fancy medieval beach hut. Hmm, who knew leading lines would be so tasty? Boom, number seven is foreground interest. Sometimes the landscape shot can look completely bland when you've shot it with a wide angle and you've got this vast expanse of land in front of you with nothing interesting there. You could try dancing like a pleb, but that doesn't change things. Sometimes you'll have the wrong kind of foreground interest. This, this is what you don't usually see in the pictures, like crap loads of traffic. Or the wrong kind of interest. <laughs> Fleshy foreground things work, although it starts becoming more about the people. Selfish. But a typical landscapey thing is to put a non-fleshy thing in your foreground for interest. And point number eight, lucky number eight for all those Chinese people out there is stop it down. Have a smaller aperture. Bigger F number equals smaller aperture for those new photographers out there. But yet at the same time, don't run into the mistake of having the smallest aperture possible. That's what I did when I first started doing landscapes because a smaller aperture like F22, you'll get diffraction, therefore making your shot softer. Personally, I'd probably go to F16, smallest, offers plenty of doff. But you want a small aperture to have a greater depth of field, more stuff in focus. And if you want all that detail in your landscape shot, in the background, in the foreground, in the field, to have that depth, you need greater depth of field. 
You can see how a shallow depth of field may appeal to shallow bokeh whores. You see what I did there? But with the background in focus only, or the foreground in focus only, you can only look at that part, so not so desirable. If you want to try something a bit different, go aerial. If you want dramatic shots, something that hasn't been done so many times before, reach for the freaking skies. And point number 10 could be the rule of thirds, but I fucking hate talking about rule of thirds because everybody talks about it and then they treat it as a rule rather than a guide, a suggestion, as it should be. Rule of thirds can get you a nice, aesthetically pleasing shot, but don't let it dictate your creativity. Point number 10 is a bit soppy and it's a bit motivational speech and all that, but don't give up. Don't let the weather get you down. If it's cloudy, there is always a way. The weather and the wet bits on the ground don't always work for you. You're not there, boss. I can't see many astro bits. Can't see many stars, so it's just gonna be clown photography. That bit looks great over there. Unfortunately, we're not pointing that way. We need the water to come in and it's over there. Yeah, screw you, Tide, and the darkness, you bugger. Anywho, if it's cloudy, try black and white landscape. If it's dark, long exposure, but expose properly. The photo, not you, although nobody will see in the dark. Point is, even if you think the shoot is not working, take some shots anyway. You might be surprised what you get, like Forrest Gump. So there we are, my 10 points for helping you get some seriously sick AKA some lovely landscape shots. Hope you enjoyed it, hope it was informative, and if you liked it, please smash your like button or lightly tap it if you like, and subscribe, and some more useful content and some less useful content down there. Maybe I can put something else in the other corner as well.